Ja, och så de sitter. Ja, det är det. Okej. Hej all. Welcome to the Jenkins Governance Meeting. Today is uh, February 10th. And we have a few topics in the agenda. So um, there were uh, a few recent releases. And one key highlight that uh, we updated uh, Docker images. So now they are based on uh, Debian uh, 10 Buster instead of uh, previous stretch images. And there are some uh, breaking changes um, uh, uh, due to that. So uh, Mark uh, could expand it more. Just, yeah. uh, by the way, thanks Mark, uh, to Mark for the blog post. So on separate note, yeah, we have a new LTS. There were a few relatively minor backports there. Uh, so in just a second, I will uh, post to the link. And still need to find it. Okay. So, yeah, in this LTS, um, I don't think we have anything uh, particularly important, though there are some minor improvements. And uh, the most important thing is the next LTS baseline, which will be based on uh, 2.777. So release candidate is coming soon. And basically this uh, case will integrate uh, all breaking changes um, and major update we were discussing before. So it's tables to divs, it's extreme unforking, it's uh, a jQuery replacement. Um, and also zillions of uh, smaller things uh, here and there. So if you use Jenkins, it's definitely a good time uh, to test uh, this release uh, because uh, yeah, um, the update uh, may impact uh, uh, installations. And the one uh, critical item is uh, tables to divs because we still know about many regressions um, in plugins which haven't been fixed yet. So last time I checked, uh, we knew about something like uh, 20 plugins which are about uh, to be affected. Just a second, I'll uh, find the query. And on that note, because people have been testing weeklies, uh, a lot of people aren't updating their plugins when they update their their main installs, and that usually is the cause for these issues. So, you know, update your plugins at the same time. Yeah, in this case, uh, update uh, will be necessary, and uh, they think that uh, many plugin versions are not compatible with uh, the previous LTS baseline. So it will be a two-stage uh, process if you want uh, to upgrade. So you just upgrade uh, Jenkins core, then you upgrade plugins. And still, uh, there is a number of uh, plugins which uh, will uh, likely require fixes. So, regarding um, major plugins, we have a few ones uh, which are likely to be affected. For example, uh, authorized project plugin. I uh, guess uh, there are many users uh, of it. And uh, there are more plugins, but yeah, the most of uh, major ones have been actually updated um, over the past months. Let's proceed to the query. So we have um, four weeks um, until the next um, release. So definitely we could use this time uh, to uh, clean up uh, the regressions and uh, to stabilize uh, the release more if possible. Okay, since we have taken uh, the baseline, I guess uh, right now we basically push forward. So what ha whatever happens, we try uh, to land uh, the next LCS baseline. And if needed to be, if there is a need to maintain the previous LTS baseline, yeah, we can release dot five if needed. If um, there will be, if it will be strictly necessary. Okay. 
So that's it uh, regarding the upcoming release. So regarding FOSDOM, I guess it's rather to you, Mark, and to you, Alisa. Yeah, so a retrospective document has been started uh, in the FOSDOM assignment sheet that Alyssa's collected. People are encouraged to uh, include comments there. I was very impressed with the technology. Uh, we had relatively low traffic at the Jenkins stand. Oleg and I had a very good session diagnosing with a PhD candidate from Germany, if I remember right, who was having some interesting challenges uh, doing development, but it was a one-on-one -on -one experience much more than the, the Jenkins stand at FOSDEM in the past had lots of walk-by traffic and lots of people that interacted with us. This one was much, much quieter in terms of interactions. It could be that we need to put specific things on the schedule to encourage people to visit the stand at specific times. I'm not clear yet what would what would help the stand get more traffic. It was just low traffic this time. So I think Oli well, was also uh, uh, was also a, a st um, stand volunteer. I would love to get your feedback on that too, Oli. Yeah, I was there on Sunday, mm -hmm. and on Sunday I think actually nobody was there. Just mm -hmm. the Jenkins people were there and nobody visited some people came in for maybe two or three minutes and then they checked <laughs> nobody else is here no presentation is here and then they yeah went away so okay um, i don't know what we can do to attract more people but i think what mark already said maybe if we have more presentations with schedules it would make more, more sense yeah um, because I, I don't know so virtually it's a little bit different to step by it so you don't see the other people so you need to go to these uh, Jitsi, which nobody some people came only to chat but actually on the stand, I was not sure who is actually uh, registered in the chat. So you don't see who is there. So uh, in the stand, you see, okay, there are 10 people around and you can say hello uh, from my side, but in the chat, it's a little bit passive. So I, I think we have maybe 70 people in the chat but these were all the people that have been registered but not were available so there is no peep if someone new is ping coming in and this was a little bit hard to recognize if, if we have new people here or so I, I did not do any presentation because nobody was there so right. <laughs> I offered but <laughs> nobody responded so yeah no but this is this is good feedback um because i i think i'd like to circle back to the organizers and see what was the feedback from the other um other stands because this is the first time that we're actually doing this uh virtual um and i mean most in previous years people come to our stand for the stickers and buy our t-shirts and 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 just to just just have a casual chat um, so this was quite different this year. Um, and, and I also like the idea of possibly adding our presentations, or our demo to make possibly the main schedule. Because I think that was, that was, not, that was not done. Um, I mean, we, we had our schedule on our page, but it wasn't on the main schedule. So that might help next, could, next time. We could have you could uh, have also posted uh, the presentations as Jenkins Online Meetup um, specifically so that we could uh, drive uh, traffic uh, from our platform to force them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do know there was some confusion between the two video streams as well because there was a conference uh, 
widget and then there was like a one-on-one -on -one chat widget and i had at least a couple of people private message me i don't know why but private message me about the conference widget not working but i think we just didn't have any content going at the time yeah. Yeah, the conference thing didn't work for me either so. and, and i had heard from olivier that it was in general not working so so that's not a that that was a one of the flaws there, but it was a relatively minor flaw in that they knew that the conference thing in order instead we had to use Jitsi and that is somewhat of a barrier. You had to join the Jitsi meet. Yeah, and when you do join it, it's it it drops you in video chat right away. So there's no like listening or looking or lurking before you join in, which uh, at eleven one a.m. for me was a little bit not the best time to join a video chat. And thanks for the link. Alyssa, would you be willing to transfer some of these retrospective notes into the into that retrospective doc? Would you? Yeah, absolutely. Super, thanks. Mm -hmm. So I like oh like I think we've sort of concluded on the Fosdom topic. Yeah, and since uh, there is no skill this year, uh, basically uh, the same conference, the next big conference for us is CDCon, from what I understand. Right. Uh, well, maybe there will be something before, but I'm not sure. I guess we won't have a stand um, at KubeCon, will we? Because continuous delivery foundation uh, likely sponsors KubeCon. Yeah, I don't know about that. I have to look into that, Oleg. Mm -hmm. For Jenkins, it's unlikely, but as a part of CDF, like it was before, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, probably C I think CDF will be there, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um if anything, we will be part of CDF, but we won't do like a standalone Jenkins. Mm -hmm. um, since we're talking about um, events, can I also add in here um, about DevOps worlds when we're ready? I have some information on that. Mm -hmm. So um, DevOps World is going to be September 29th and 30th this year. Um, there's a workshop on the 28th, workshop day on the 28th. Uh, we have a community track that has about 20, 24 sessions that we are, um, we're, that we're gonna be doing um, community sessions for and CDF will have its own track as well. So I am going to be starting a um, a, CD, a CFP committee to to work with me on um, the the submissions for um, the community track. So I'm looking for volunteers to basically review the submissions, grade it, and kind of work with me to assemble what, what the agenda should look like for the community track at DevOps World. And it's also going to be online. Mm -hmm. Does DevOps World replace Jenkins World? Or yes. is it an addition yes. to? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's effective starting from yeah, 2020.
and what are the topics uh, for the community tracks? Um, I mean, like, we, well, culture, um, how, how are, what are people doing with regards to Jenkins and, you know, open source, how are people growing the community? So all things community and all things open source, basically. Uh, but I think the theme of the conference, and this isn't yet really confirmed, but it's about, it's building the future of software delivery together. The pressure to type well is always high when you're everyone watching right <laughs> i think it's impossible to do i yeah i i don't do that very well <laughs> so are there any other opportunities uh, for community collaboration because uh, maybe we could do another contributor summit around uh, the DevOps world dates. Sure. So, for example, 27th yeah. or maybe third, uh, or October first. Yeah, let's let's talk about it and let and then um, we yeah. can see what the needs are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just keep it in mind because, yeah. Anything else on this on DevOps one? No, oh, that's it. Thank you. Okay. So Oleg, would it be okay if we talk briefly about contributor summit? Of course. We have time. Why? So, so for for everyone's information, the contributor summit proposal is in the email. Uh, the idea is February twenty three through twenty five. We'll have an online uh, series of sessions. Um, Olivia Vernin is actually interested in possibly facilitating, possibly using the same technology stack as was used for FOSDEM uh, for this for this exercise. I'm more worried right now about how do we do the registration process? How do we assure that we get people's interests and that they understand which tracks might be happening, etc. So. I'll start, I'll continue actively sending emails through the rest of this week. Uh, the idea being that, that by the end of this week, people should know and be repeatedly hearing this thing is going to happen. Um, my, ten, my tendency right now is to just use an online Google Sheet to allow people to register. They put their name in it and we use that. I, I could consider other techniques like Sign Up Genius or you choose it, but I was just looking for something simple and easy. Oh, well, we could uh, just do Google form. Ah, yes, okay. I mean, uh, I'd rather do form than sheets just because sheets will leak information. Oh, right, right, okay. Good, thanks, good insight. Yeah, so we actually do not need too much information uh, for registration. So we can use it just to collect feedback who is interested in which topics. So basically use it as a form uh, to suggest uh, whatever on conference topics. And we don't need to collect emails or whatever. Well, maybe optional. I, I like the idea of, of not necessarily reconnect collecting emails. That's great. The less information we collect that's personally identifying, the better. Mm -hmm. 
when you said like FOSDEM, do you mean like actually get a the matrix set up and everything or just have some chat rooms? That's what that's what he was thinking is actually running the matrix setup. And and for me it was an interesting idea of hey, if we wanted to do a first a sort of first first class experiment of trying a different way of communicating with each other, the matrix setup they used would be very interesting. And he was interested in it. I'll check with him early next week to see if his interest is still there. At, at minimum, we'll use we'll use Zoom and do it the way the way I'm accustomed to doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because well, the only concern there is uh, so FOSDEM is was running their own matrix setup. So they had everything hosted on their their, their servers, their home servers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you would want to do the same for Jenkins, but then you'd have to decide if we want to have like another set of credentials or use LDAP credentials. And I don't think we necessarily want a lot more people signing up for LDAP credentials just because, you know, so it gets complicated. Right. And 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 that's where I'm I'm sort of delegating or leaving that to Olivier. My fallback position is to assume that we'll use Zoom. And uh, if Olivier proves that, hey, we've got this other thing that could work, I'm open to it. Good, good, good question, though, Gavin. Excellent question. I do really like the breakout stuff in Zoom. It works really well. Hmm. All right. Yeah. So regarding the contributor summit, uh, do we already have uh, all tracks in place? We have a number of tracks in place, but I don't yet have uh, active, con I don't yet have good information from people who will act as track leaders. So I've, I've identified the secu a security track, a developer onboarding track, a documentation track, and I think there were two or three others that I haven't put into it. Oh, pipeline authoring track. Uh, and, and so we've got some tracks, but I am confident that we need more tracks uh, based on people's interest levels. And my intent is to send direct invitations to specific individuals, encourage, asking them, would you be willing to lead this track or this track, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, so those are the, the topics I had also identified Cloud Native and Cara de la Marque is, is interested and ready to lead that platform, uh, user experience. So Felix has agreed to do a presentation in the opening session, summarizing user experience, but it's not, I'm not yet confident we've got enough interest to have a full track on user experience. So that's, that's still one that Uli, you may be interested in that one enough to be the track lead. Yeah, I, I think I would like to participate, but I'm not sure if there are a lot of other people who are normally not around, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and that's that's where this exercise of trying to collect who the people are that are interested and their interests is an important one. So I'll, I'll, I think the Google form is a good idea to allow us to survey people's names and identify areas of interest where what I do is put these things as check boxes that they could select, and then also an open field or several open fields where they can give us additional topics they would like covered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and okay, we can just uh, get uh, free and conference slots. So uh, not just additional topics, but maybe wider slots. So that's uh, why it makes sense to start the uh, registration earlier so that uh, you can get uh, more information about what are the interests. Yeah, so now when you say wider slots, oh, like are you thinking things like a combination of security, infrastructure and releases? That is that what you mean by a wider slot or tell me more what you mean by a wider slot? I mean, so for example, we have for these introduction uh, sessions and then, for example, we can reserve, uh, let's say, one hour for ad hoc breakout sessions, or maybe the same one hour before before the closing. Ah, I see. Okay, good. So where we could do just breakout sessions, allow people to to in those breakout sessions that are attached to the opening or the closing session, so they they spend time in the breakout. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I like that. I think that's that's a good use, and that's a use I had not considered making of Zoom's breakout sessions, where we could consider going 90 minutes in the welcome session presentation, add 30 to it for breakout sessions, and let that be the initial organization of of these tracks. So then they can find when when will their times work for them to meet, have a good conversation about it. Very good. Thanks. Yeah, it's. Well, uh, to make it successful, uh, we just uh, need to, uh, to start um, uh, on conference topics earlier. But right. uh, if it works, uh, it's great. Super. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's really all that I have on Contributor Summit. Thanks for the guidance on Google Forms and on the that will widen the widen the initial session to 120 minutes, 90 minutes of presentation, plus 30 minutes breakout. Good, okay. okay. That's all that I have. Nothing from me. Yeah, I mean, other than I'm excited to see uh, searching in plugin site soon, but I don't know if that's governance. Well, actually, that's that's a contributor summit topic, and searching is coming to the plugin site. I like that. I'll improve searching, yeah. Sorry, say that again, Gavin. I said improved searching. There's already searching. All oh, right. Mm -hmm. Come on, it's search with AI. I think you have to pay lots of money for that feature. Oh, we, can have, oh, we can pretend it's there, you know? Okay, got it. That's great. But if that experiment works out, it might be nice to roll it into the main site as well. Right. And it is, so and search for the doc site is certainly a topic for Contributor Summit. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, for the Contributor Summit, I, I've never actually been to those events, but would it be worth having a um, topic about, I guess it'd be more something I would just pitch in the forums, but uh, how do you get your company involved in Jenkins or open source? Yeah, outreach. Yeah, it's usually yeah, but, we have a contributor onboarding table. Uh, but outreach is more like Jenkins people reaching out to companies. I was thinking about you as in someone in a company wanting to get your people more involved. You know, because I, I know it's some, a topic I've always had issues at certain companies. They've always been excited, but they've never really done anything. And you as an employee, like, I'm really excited about this thing. How do I get someone to help out? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good topic. I, I like that. I think that's. That's a that's a very good one. Could, could we provide a kit? Could we provide a packet that says, "Hey, here's what you can do at our company, and and here are the things that you need to check to be sure that your company allows it, and yep. this is what you can do, and this is what you can't." And uh, and stress the small things. Like you don't have to do giant contributions; you can do tiny little ones. Right. So basically, it boils down uh, to previous uh, uh, um, presentations about uh, how to contribute, etc. I believe uh, there were some sections for companies as well. So, well, basically, it boils down to ask your manager. Yeah. Well, now there is a piece there, though, that's subtle. At least there has been in past employers for me, where sometimes the employer had very specific rules about what you were allowed to do or not allowed to do contributing outside the company and learning how to ask those questions. So at least, yep. you know, the answers might be a valuable thing to have in the toolkit. Ask your manager, are you allowed to contribute documentation? Yeah. <laughs> am, am I allowed to contribute, you know, bug reports? Am I allowed and, and see if they, their answer is no or, or yes and yes with caveats. Or even things like, uh, I made this interesting pipeline. Can I talk about it in a blog post? Right, right, exactly. 
It doesn't have to be on Jenkins IO. Like their own company can talk about it. Well, and we have experience with Alyssa on some things where we had individuals who we thought had permission and there were some surprises, right? So it's, yeah. it's important to know how to ask the right questions to the right people. Yep. Great. That's all that I had, Oleg. Nothing from me. Any other topics? No. So the next meeting is uh, 24th of February. I guess we can safely say that instead of doing a common meet meeting, we can do it as a part of Contributor Summit. At least mm -hmm. uh, find a slot and attach it uh, there. Or maybe use the same time slot, but uh, make it a part of the Contributor Summit agenda. Good, yes, mm -hmm. I like that, thank you. Maybe it will help uh, to get more participants here. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. I assume that's it then. We, we need to talk about uh, Mark's awesome trademark find. Oh, <laughs> I'm uh, writing the response right now. Yeah, that that's definitely doesn't need to be on 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 the recorded meeting. We can do that by email. <laughs> okay, well, let's take it offline then. Okay. Thanks, everybody. I'll post the Thank recording you. hour Bye. or so. <laughs>